The PIF checklist is a checklist you should run before every flight to make sure that you, as the pilot in command, is safe and legal to fly, your aircraft is safe and legal to fly, the environment, such as the weather or the airport, amongst other things, is safe and legal to fly, and that you don't have anyone or any other external factor pressuring you to fly when you shouldn't. Before flight, you should always ask yourself, are you current, proficient, and safe to fly? Many people get confused between currency and proficiency. The easiest way to explain it is, you're current if you can legally fly the plane, and you're proficient if you can actually fly it. For a private pilot in the United States, you're current if you're not due for your biannual flight review, also simply referred to as FR. The flight review usually consists of one hour of ground and one hour of flight time. This is something you must do every 24 calendar months, meaning if you passed your check ride on June 15th, 2023, your flight review will be due by June 30th, 2025. You can do your flight with you with a certified flight instructor or designated pilot examiner. In addition to this, in order to legally carry passengers, you must also have performed three takeoffs and landings in the same category, class, and type, if required, in the past 90 days. If you want to carry passengers at night, those three takeoffs and landings must have been performed to a full stop and at least one hour after sunset and one hour before sunrise. Your nighttime takeoffs and landings can count for daytime, but the daytime ones cannot count for night. I will talk about categories, classes, and types, as well as the different definitions of night in separate videos. Now, you might be legally allowed to fly the plane, but you should always ask yourself if you are capable of doing it. For example, if your check ride was a year ago, you were legally allowed to go fly by yourself, but if you haven't flown at all since then, you might not be as proficient as you used to be, and going up with a CFI for a little refresher might be a good idea. And finally, ask yourself if you are safe to fly the specific flight you want to do. Just be sure to run yet another checklist, the unsafe checklist. I stands for illness. Hopefully this is pretty straightforward. If you are sick, don't fly, especially if you have a cold or something affecting your sinuses. You will regret it immediately when going up. M stands for medication. Are you taking any medication that will impair your flying? The FAA has a neat little guide I will link in the description below that lists the most common over-the-counter medications and whether it is generally safe to fly when taking them. When in doubt or to check if your prescription medication is safe to fly on, always defer to your medical examiner. S stands for stress. Have you been experiencing any stress lately? Maybe you are studying for an exam, planning a trip, or having issues at work. Stress can come from various situations. Learn how to recognize when you're experiencing it. A stands for alcohol. That one is pretty simple. You are not allowed to fly if you've had a drink in the last 8 hours and if your blood alcohol level is over 0.04%. For example, if you go on a bender on a Friday night, stop drinking at midnight, your blood alcohol level might still be over the 0.04% well into the next day. Even if it's been more than 8 hours, you cannot fly. F stands for fatigue slash food. Take care of your body. The National Institute of Health recommends adults to sleep between 7 to 9 hours every night. Know what your body needs in order to be rested and make sure to consistently get that number of hours. Same goes for food. Don't skip a meal and make sure to stay hydrated. And finally, E stands for emotions. Did something happen to affect your emotional health? Maybe a loved one passed away recently and you aren't quite in the right mindset to go fly a plane just yet. Give yourself time and learn how to recognize the signs you might not be fit to fly. Now some of those are pretty clearly black or white situations like the alcohol or medication. Others might be more of a gray area. You might still be fit to fly a plane if your night was cut short by an hour. What you should be looking out for is when things start to stack up. If you didn't sleep well last night because you had a fight with your significant other, then things are starting to compound and that's dangerous. Know yourself, know your limits, and be smart about your go-no-go -go decision. The next thing you want to check on is your aircraft. You will want to make sure it has all the required documents to fly, that all the proper maintenance has been done, and of course do a thorough pre-flight inspection. I'll talk more about the last one in a separate series of videos about flight planning. For now, let's focus on documents and maintenance, and two acronyms to help you remember what those are, AeroPEC and AAV8s. A is for airworthiness certificate. It's a simple piece of paper, usually white unless your aircraft has a special airworthiness certificate. It doesn't expire as long as the aircraft is maintained properly and operated in accordance with the federal aviation regulations. It is required to be on board the aircraft and visible to your passengers. On small aircraft, look for it near the pilot's legs. 
or the first one is for registration certificate. It documents who owns the aircraft and the owner must renew it every seven years. It also needs to be on board the aircraft when flying, but it does need to be visible. It's therefore usually placed behind the airworthiness certificate. Or the second one is for radio station license, and this is something you only need to worry about if you're going to fly outside the US. O is for operating limitations. A copy of the FAA-approved POH on board will satisfy this requirement for the specific airplane by serial number. W is for weight and balance. Make sure a copy of the current weight and balance is present on board. It is specific to each individual airplane, and always calculate your weight and balance before each flight to make sure you aren't overweight or outside the envelope. I will probably make a separate video to go over how to do this. P is for placards. Look for those on the dashboard inside the cockpit. They list additional operating limitations in accordance with the POH. E is for external data plates. Look for those on the aircraft fuselage or empennage. That's also where you will find your plane serial number. C is for compass deviation card. Look for it next to your magnetic compass if you have one. And finally, you want to be sure your aircraft is up to date on all maintenance. Airworthiness directives, or ADs, are issued by the FAA to correct an unsafe condition. They can be one-time, recurring, or emergency, and you are legally required to comply with them, unlike the service bulletins issued by the manufacturer. Annual inspection, that needs to be done every 12 calendar months. VOR, that one is every 30 days, but only if you're flying IFR. 100-hour inspection is only required if the aircraft is used for hire. That would apply to any flight school aircrafts. Altimeter, but really the whole pitot-static system, must be inspected every 24 calendar months. Transponder, same thing, must be done every 24 calendar months. ELT operation and battery condition must be inspected every 12 calendar months, and the battery must be replaced after half of its lifetime or after one hour of consecutive use. And finally, STC for supplemental type certificate, if the aircraft has any. You can double check those have all been completed by looking in the aircraft maintenance logbook. Environment is a really big subject to cover in depth. So here I will only do an overview of things to look for and check on before flight, and I will probably make more detailed videos on each of those items separately. As pilot in command, you are responsible for gathering all available information before a flight, per 91103. Always check on the current and forecasted weather condition at all airports you are planning to fly to, your alternates, and along your route of flight. Items to check on include METARs, TAFs, and if applicable, airmits, SIGMITs, convective SIGMITs, and PIREPs. Those will give you information such as wind velocity, temperature, sky coverage, visibility, and possible adverse meteorological conditions. I will link FAA-funded websites to get you weather information from in the description below. And you can always call 1-800-X-BRIEF to get a weather briefing from someone who, let's face it, knows a ton more about weather than the average private pilot. You should also familiarize yourself with each airfield's basic information, such as, amongst other things, runway's length, orientation and slope, field elevation, condition of flight, meaning day or night, and therefore airport lighting, pattern altitude, terrain slash airspace, radio frequencies, arrival and departure procedures, VFR reporting points, and more important than anything else, always check the NOTAMs before flight, and if there are any TFR active along your route of flight. And finally, let's talk about external pressure. This is both the most straightforward item on this list and the most insidious one. At the core, it's pretty simple. Don't let anything or anyone pressure you into flying. But external pressure can come in many forms. Maybe you promised your kids to go for a flight and you know they'll be disappointed if you don't. Or you're flying somewhere with some friends for a specific event you're all attending and might miss if you can't fly. Don't put yourself in this situation. Always have a backup plan. Leave early, for example, so if you can't fly, you'll have time to jump in the car and drive instead. And that's a wrap on the PAVE checklist. Please let me know in the comments below what subjects you'd like me to talk about next. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.